three, two, one. This is Crime Cruise, Love Boat Exposed. Saturday on the Love Boat. The podcast that hunts down and tears apart shenanigans on this classic TV show. I see an awful lot of bodies who really have nothing to be ashamed of. When laws, morals, and behavior go rogue. She's a student of marine biology, and I know a lot of marines who like to study her biology. We are there. Saturday on the Love Boat, Julie's game to join an all-male club, but she's shocked at the things they ask her to do. Now, from Studio 109, welcome aboard. I think it's time you and I got to know each other. But a man looks very lonely at sea. Yes, I can imagine. Crime Cruise, Love Boat Exposed. What's that line you used to say, Charlotte? High seas and low morals. High seas and low morals. Never uh, worse than this, perhaps, at least for Julie in the situation she somehow walked into rather innocently. And the captain seems to have sacrificed her to some... Uh, Lecherous old man. Gosh, it's a scary one. Don't know where it's going to go because she was all, she was certainly harassed and she was almost raped in the last episode by mm-hmm. the captain's uncle. I am Rob Springer. You are? Charlotte Jones. And producer Caleb, how are you out west? Yeah, doing good. <laughs> kind of terrified for what's in store for this episode. Oh, gosh. Uh, if he's terrified, part I'm Part two really of scared. last week. Yeah. We, yeah. It's a little, little nerve-wracking. Yeah, we know the reaction on IMDb and some of the reviews of this episode that we're watching right now. Part two of season two, episode five, is what we're focusing on here because we don't know where this crazy bottle is going to land as it spins. Do kids still play spin the bottle this day? Producer these days? Caleb, do they? Uh, I know we definitely joke about it um, at parties. It's always like, oh, let's way spin the bottle, ha ha ha, but it never actually happens. So oh, we do know play. about it. Yeah. But I don't think we actually play. People might, but oh. the parties that I went to, it was all just kind of a joke. Oh. Mm. I remember that not being a joke at the parties that I went to. Like it was a good thing. No, it was always scary to play, but oh, you always okay. just agreed to play. And then we Funny. had to go in the closet with somebody and give them a kiss or whatever. Never yeah. lands on the person you no. want it to. Okay. Ever. Uh, it's yeah. a terrible conundrum. I didn't play as a child. That was ugly. Oh, stop. <laughs> Here we go with the ugly duckling stories. No, actually, I did play Spin the Bottle. It was just with myself. Oh, wow. At the age of 13. It always went really well. I'm sure it did. (laughs) Sick and not true. That was a fictional uh, representation of a story that never happened. Never happened, ever. Uh, Okay. That's why he's so nervous about it. Yeah. (laughs) That's very true, Caleb. Producer Caleb. I know. How are things out? I'm just going to say it. I'm going to roll the dice. How are things out in Utah? How are they? It's great. Yeah. You know, snow keeps coming in. <laughs> Temperatures keep dropping. we got the best snow on earth. You know, that's what we advertise, at least here in Utah. And that's so, what y'all do, advertise. The yeah, best snow so on earth, that's what you say. Time. Yeah, it's, it's on our license place. It's it's oh, what yeah. we advertise. It's our big tourist uh, hook and catch. Yeah. It's, it's the best snow on the planet. Right. Yeah. Well, you could say a whole lot of other things about Utah as well. Oh, you could say a whole lot of other right. things, but let's just focus on the snow. But yeah, okay. but yeah, the snow, the snow. Yeah, the snow, the snow, the let's snow. Focus on the snow. Don't look over there at the dude with seven wives. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> let me ask you this about the snow, though, since we're talking snow. Uh, have you ever eaten the snow? Of course. Yeah, you make the, snow okay, ice I have, cream. It's like I have a little little story for you. So, Uh-oh. please. About two years ago, we had a really big snowstorm. And I came into work. I was the opening manager or whatever. I came in at a Little Caesars at 6 a.m. with with my boss. We both came in and we're both like, you know, we have all this snow. Why don't we just go to like Smith's or like Walmart or something and just make snow cones? Uh, And so we bought like some sort of juice um, and like Hawaiian punch juice or whatever. Came back to the, the Little Caesars and we just got the snow from the front yard we didn't clean it or whatever and we just put oh, the wow, water you like, didn't clean it. was it yellow snow we just, <laughs> don't eat the yellow snow <laughs> we just we just went for it i love that uh, my mom used to make snow ice cream snow melted and it was all brown and gross and dirty Plus, but we disgusting. didn't disgusting that's disgusting it was yummy we had the, we had the hawaiian punch <laughs> see this is what kids do there was an old Saturday night live sketch where gilda radner did a song don't eat the yellow snow it was a uh, Wizard of Oz. Oh, okay, got it. Your man Bill Murray was in it. Oh, I love Bill Murray so much. 
Bill Murray used to date Gilda Radner. Really? Absolutely. Well, I'm sure. He, he loved her. They must have had fun conversations. Oh my God. Can you imagine yeah, being I, a fly I, on that wall? Here we go. We have a few plot lines rolling. We have Richard Mulligan. We have Eric Estrada. We have Mackenzie Phillips. We have yeah, we Red have Buttons. It. Red Buttons. We have uh, Julie and the captain's uncle. Mm-hmm. We have a, an author trying to finish the last chapter and his publisher and the author keeps trying to steal the publisher's wife. And then we have these two young people who haven't seen each other since high school, but the young woman's father is trying to make a business deal with a very creepy man. Mm-hmm. Those are the, the three storylines we're following, just as a recap for uh, everyone who may have forgotten. And the creepy man is hitting on the book publisher's wife. And- we have creepy men all over this episode, yeah, I just right. want to say. It's, yeah. In every plot line. They're all creepy men. Yeah. And three, two, one. Well, Marty, this little merger of ours has side benefits I never even imagined. Oh, gross. He's looking at Brad, for that. about our two companies. Plenty of time to talk about business, Marty. Right now, I feel like dancing. How about it, Allison? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, right now I'd like to do a song for a very dear friend of mine. It's Eric Estrada. Someone I wish were more than just a friend. Uh Uh-oh. And the lady's name is... It's Julie McCoy. (gasps) Well, spin the bottle, huh? I know that was a very quick, quick jump. I I had to cut it out because there were little really long pauses that just... Thank just you. awkward. Oh, no, I get that. Forward. But, like, I hate this guy. He's sitting with the girl, Mackenzie Phillips, and her father. And he literally looks over and goes, ooh, this job deal has side benefits I never even knew with about. With your daughter. With your daughter. He's uh-huh. staring straight at her. And the dad does nothing. And then he's like, forget it. I'm going to dance. And just, like, grabs her. It's so bizarre. I don't understand what the father is doing. And Eric Estrada is playing a, a saxophone, it looks like, some kind of horn. And he was about to say... Hey, this one goes out to my lady, Mackenzie Phillips, but she nodded. Don't say that because she's part of the thing. She's, again, a sacrificial female in this episode. She knows her place, as you would say. Because her daddy apparently not just endorses her sleeping with his new potential business partner, but um, uh, wants it. Wants it. Yeah. 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 Seal the deal, as they say, I think, Seal right? The deal, I guess. Seal, the, Seal deal. the deal. I don't even know if that's where that came from, but it kind of sounds like it's it could of, have. It's one of them. And it looks like Eric Estrada playing against type because yes. he's usually the ladies' man. Now he's the sort of the the uh, the third wheel and he's kind of getting cocked a little bit. Yeah, but he has two things going for him. One is that he's hot and two is that he's in a band. I thought you were going to say his teeth and his dark tan. Well, I was sad. He's very good looking <laughs> and he's in a band, but I could have said his teeth and his tan. It would have made <laughs> he's sense. He's got four things at least. He has a lot of things going. Well, and he knows right, how to ride Charlotte, a cop bike. Slow down. Okay. I don't want to know what the fifth one is. <laughs> well, can only imagine. <laughs> Stupid jokes. Oh, old man waiting for the party. Oh, party time. Hello, everybody. <gasps> I'm going to stop it for a Wait, second. What? We're just, we're looking at uh, the captain's uncle, Red Buttons, the old guy, and the party is going to start and Julie has just walked in, apparently the first party guest. So here we go. Or can... maybe the only party guest, maybe they oh, played know. with her no. and she, then no one else is coming. The, he had a party happening for sure. So let's, let's just. He could have called them all and told oh, them. Where is them. everybody? Oh, they'll be here in a minute. Oh. Oh. Why don't you have a drink, Julie? Something to get the ball rolling. Well, I was hoping the ball would already be rolling. Uh, you sure the others are coming? Oh, they better. I just opened up a fresh can of peanuts there on the nightstand. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh. Earth, you're old enough to be my grandfather. He's Forget Sun City. This is Fun City. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God, he's grabbing her legs. Foster, you can call me Cyrus. What are you doing? I'm proposing. Behave yourself and let go of me. I like your spunk, girl. You and I make beautiful music together. Get yourself a tape deck. Oh, come on, Julie, don't play so hard to get. I'm he's really a nice guy. Once you get to know me, I draw on people. Plant yourself on somebody else. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Foster, look what on earth is that couple doing out there? What couple? Oh. Gross. She was like literally crawling on the floor, trying to get away from him. And he's grabbing her legs as she's crawling on the floor, trying to get away from him. And won't let go. And he still doesn't get it. She's even like, you're old enough to be my grandfather. And he's like, who doesn't? I mean, gross. Attempted rape. 
Yes. I, Did they clear. even have Viagra back in the day? Because I'm not even convinced he could complete the process. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he, I don't know. Maybe he rubbed something exotic on himself. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'll cut that out. So gross. Poor I, Julie. I don't know. It's, uh, uh, there's not a lot to say here. I mean, it was visually astounding and disgusting. You heard the words that were used, everyone. Julie barely escaped. And if she wasn't like a Sprite person, she would have been taken massively advantage of. Oh, my God. Absolutely. He's so And like the fact that he thinks that he's some like Casanova, he's like, oh, forget fun. Forget Sin City. This is fun city. Gross. What's so fun about a 78 year old man jumping on top of you when you're in your 20s? Nothing's fun about that. I'm asking this. It's more of a hypothetical question. Oh, God. No, it's where does. Here we go. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a philosophical question and, <laughs> and not hypothetical. Where does redemption happen for this scenario, for these people in this episode? Can it even? No. I, it can if he were arrested. Yeah, or if he claimed he forgot to take his mental medication and he's like just on some ripper right now. But like literally yeah. he's insane. He's gross. There's no redemption for him. I doubt it. Or for the author, really. Like, he's trying to take everyone else's wife. What do you think, Caleb? Does anybody get, like, redeemed? Or is everyone just a dick when they leave the boat, too? They get redeemed, but it's a very love boat redeeming thing. It's not like an actual redemption. Mm. It's just a okay. It's it's, not something that would actually. Okay, gotcha. It's a cop out. It's a nice little little bow at the end of the episode. And I don't know know that we'll see that scene, but uh, maybe he just says, oh, sorry about that, Julie. But then that would be redemption in the terms of love boat. Maybe that doesn't even happen. We'll uh, see. We'll have to see. But uh, a, an arrest would be really the only form of redemption that no. begins yeah. to uh, make good on this situation. You guys, how could you not show up? How could you leave me there all along with that old lecher? Julie, he called all of us up and canceled. Told you. Yeah, he said he wanted to catch up on his sleep. Hmm. Oh, that's not all he wanted to catch on. (laughs) All the sneaky, devious, deceitful tricks. Yeah. Sounds like your technique, Doc. (laughs) (laughs) You guys, that is not funny. Okay, first of all, is that the end of the scene? Yeah. If I went to men that knew me on a boat that I'd been working with forever and told them that was happening to me, if all three of those men did not get up from the table and immediately go kick that motherfucker's ass, (laughs) then I would quit my job. You'd be right. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, my boyfriend would kill the guy, but like, I would expect the people that I live with or like work with, cause they basically are like family. They're, they're like in a college dorm, basically. Uh huh. Like what is, what's wrong? They're just as gross as he is. And who was sitting there? They're just there. younger. It was a gopher. It was the doc and it was. Uh, Isaac. I expect more from Isaac. Uh, uh, I was going to say the same. He's like, Hey doc, wink, wink. That sounds like your move. And he's like, yeah, it does. Gross. Yeah. Not funny. And, and Julie even says this is not funny. Oh, she does say that. And mm-hmm. I would admonish the audience, except obviously they just use a laugh track. People are laughing at something probably from the Jackie Gleason in the 1940s, and now their laughing is being applied to sexual assaults. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they wouldn't like that. I'm sure they wouldn't like that either. Ha ha, real funny. The doc me. might. Yeah. Julie, you want to go skinny dipping in the pool? <laughs> He's following her with binoculars. Ha. Splendid scenery, isn't it? Blended scenery. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. He literally won't stop. Go skinny dipping in the pool. Gross. That guy's dick doesn't work anyway. Can you imagine all shriveled up in a pool, all (laughs) cold and shit? Like, it's going to be disgusting. (laughs) And it was the captain and his uncle on deck with binoculars. And the captain, they show he's looking at, oh, isn't this wonderful? And he's looking out at, you know, Acapulco or something. And the old man has his binoculars pointed the other way, following Julie and her body parts. He's just gross. Yeah, and the audience chuckles and laughs away. There's no chuckling. Caleb, what what do you think about what the hell's going on? It's it's disgusting. It's yeah. like it's gonna be the most disgusting moment in Love Boat history. Yeah. Like, I gotta know how they could yeah. pop this unless they show like actual like groping and like it I, and they can't top this. It's They've reached their peak. Yeah, they've it's, reached it's their the groping max for sure. They're they're groping hard in this episode. Well, whatever happens next is going to be uh, uh, unbelievable. And my God, it can't be worse, but we'll know after this commercial. We'll be right back with more Love Boat Exposed. 
Go to loveboatexposed.com to send us a message, leave a voicemail, or learn more about the show and our team. Who knows? You might just be invited to the captain's table. It's a pleasure to welcome you aboard. I'm speaking for my entire crew. The hell with you, Captain Steuben. I know. I'm mad at him. And your <laughs> weird family. Uncle. All right. Well, I did promise some kind of closure. So okay, let's ready. see what happens. I don't him. know. I don't feel like anyone's going to change. Now you forget. Mackenzie Phillips is kissing Ponch. Now, Eric I don't want to rush you into anything. Jimmy, you're not rushing that. What about this guy, Brad? That's business and business only. Okay. Dad's business partner seeing him with. You want me to take off? Do you mind? Oh my God! Pick up where we left off later. Her dad wants her to sleep with this dude. There's an arrangement. Uh -huh. Who is that guy? Oh, he's just an old friend. Well, let's just keep it that way, okay? Mm. Now, how about a nice kiss for a new friend? Forced kiss. Eric Estrada sees it. He's sad. Oh, uh -uh. that that moment right there is is what like made me put this clip in. Like he kissed her on the cheek. She clearly didn't want it. She like turned her head and then he grabbed her cheek yeah. and like forced her onto his lips. <sighs> I was gonna mention the grabbing of the face. Like, no, you will kiss me. Well, what about the fact that she was like, "I love you," but I gotta hang out with this guy because it's business. I mean, that's like what? I mean, she's in on it with her dad. I guess she knows what's expected of her. Wow, to close the deal. Yeah, it's like they're a, she's in a role gypsy family or something where they just have arranged marriages or arranged business sex. contracts. Yeah, yeah, really horrible. It happens every day. It's well, happening right now somewhere. Uh, sure, and also really horrible that Mackenzie Phillips has this kind of a role. Yeah, you know? I know. She had a lot of problems, not just the, the you know, the ancestral problems, but she, they drove her to the edge. Oh, 100% to the edge. Uh, drugs and all. You read her book. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I read all it's the books. It's really horrible. So to see her doing this kind of a role really does But I think she suck. must have like disassociated herself when she was doing all these sure, things. Sure, She had to have. I, I think so. Producer Caleb, you know what we're talking about? Not particularly, right. but I can kind of sending pick you up a book. what you're putting down. Yeah, send me a book. All right. Yeah, yeah. check your it's mailbox. It's not even worth talking about. It's just really bad stuff. Yeah. All right, here, guys, is the heading to the wrap-up of this episode. I hope you two will be very happy together. Well, thank you, Alfred. We're, uh, we're going to try to be. Down what? Don't you know what your life will be like married to this lush? Hey, I beg your pardon. Ah! Oh! <laughs> There's a fight, a punch. What? Bluebeard, are you all right? See, they're really on a boat. Hold on just a second. Oh, it's a full out fight, a free for all. Stop it! Stop it! Captain. This is your captain, and that is an order. This is to defend a woman's honor. Oh, captain gets punched and well deserved. Everyone got punched. Oh, redemption in a way? I don't know because like <laughs> everyone is just standing around watching these two old men fight and then we have the poor wife who like tries to intervene and jumps on them and then they all end up in the pool. But did the publisher know that they were having an affair sure or did he just like walk in and see them sitting I think together? From from memory the publisher and the wife had like an argument and the wife was like you don't love me anymore but the author does. The oh, writer shit. loves me so much oh. and then the publisher was like well then go be with him then. She's like all right, I will. And then it led to this mayhem. <laughs> Why do people not remember that they're on a goddamn boat and there's nowhere they can go? They're going to have to see these people the rest of the trip or either get off in Acapulco. I know. And, and speaking of, you did see they were really on a cruise this time yeah. around. And it was maybe it was because they wanted to pull that camera way back and show this free-for-all fight. There were punches thrown in every direction. Isaac got slammed, knocked right in the jaw. The captain uh, took a hit to the face. Yep. And this woman is having these. this guy, oh, defend her honor. The two men that are defending her honor and trying to sleep with her are both clearly drunk. Yep. She jumps in at some point. I mean, people land in the pool, get out, keep swinging. There's a whole audience on deck. This was This was something new. This was something different for the love boat. This was a what I like to call fucking free-for-all. 
free for all. It was like the Matrix <laughs> before it was the Matrix. This was the most like choreographed fight scene they had ever seen on TV. All they had to do was slow it down, <laughs> slow motion, yeah. and it would have been the Matrix. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, Caleb co-host Charlotte said earlier, "What are you thinking? What the hell is in your mind when you're watching this stuff?" I mean, you guys have said everything that mm-hmm. needs to be said. It's oh. just crazy. This season, the Lovebird has taken some real like. Yeah extreme measures and just expanding and seeing what sticks really like Gilligan's Island and now this massive free for all brawl and uh, rape scenes. Like it's, it's mm. crazy. This whole season has just been just a mess. Can you imagine being in like the writer's room for this season? You're like, okay, so for this episode, oh we're going to have Julie get raped for this episode. We're going to have a guy take a woman hostage on an Island and keep her as a sex slave for this episode. I mean, like the writer's right. room must've just been right, right. insane. Like they must've been on I, so much cocaine. I, I was going to say, I think I've said this a couple of times, but every, like every other episode, I'm, I swear that like the writers were on some sort of like hallucinogen Probably. speed, some sort of 70s. like, and Some sort Hollywood. of drug, and they were just tripping bowls, and they're like, "Oh, that would be the <laughs> best <laughs> freaking the plot line in the damn planet." There's this toad, and this I'm gonna lick this toad. Like, I don't know, it's yeah. it's freaking nuts. It is nuts. Man, that's really well said. You said we said it all, but in fact, you added a whole lot to what we were saying, and that is the writers were trying everything and anything, good, bad indifferent shit and it's it's some of it sticking but it's all extreme and out of character it's like a show that's lost that doesn't really know where it's going to go maybe they're watching ratings and seeing what are the things people want to see most and then you also know they had to say let's not have the doc be so proactive in betting women but let's have him as uh someone on the sidelines right. watching it happen yeah. but then so the audience doesn't forget that the doc is a true scumbag let's have right. like isaac say hey doc that looks like something you would do exactly and they did that somewhat on the on the uh gilligan's island episode this is a i mean there was a free-for-all fight but these episodes are free for alls. It looks like we have um, one more scene, and we'll just roll it now. Mr. Foster, you came here to take me out for cocktails. Old man well, again. First, we'll have a little appetizer. How about a little cheese? <laughs> oh, if you think I'm going to retire to a neutral corner, you got another thing coming. Hurry up! He's saying I'm not going to stop. i you as fast as I can. Oh, oh no. Darling. Okay, Mac, you've mauled your last innocent. Phoebe McCoy, Milwaukee Vice, I'm taking you in. <gasps> My own niece. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Aunt Phoebe. I, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an uncle myself, and I know exactly the way you feel. I promise never to lay a hand on her again. I should hope not. Somebody with experience who's, who's been around. Oh, God. Like yourself. Help us. I'm a nut for law and order. Ah! It's go for an awake. It is go for an awake. And how did he not know that was a man on a wig? I have no idea. Because literally he just ripped <laughs> the wig off of his head, and it's obviously go for Oh, my God. Yeah, and he looks like, I can't think of it. Oh, Rocky Horror Picture yeah, Show. Yeah, gosh. Tim Curry's uh, character. Yeah, Gopher looks like Tim Curry. Yes. In, uh, the transvestite? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to leave this frame up because it says a lot. And what we're looking at is Gopher, whose wig has fallen off, and he has lipstick on, and he just looks twisted. So they've managed to offend Every, every, Everyone in this episode. <laughs> Caleb, do you know why Julie agreed to hang out with him? Because it sounds like they were going to get cocktails. Like, was it, it something again, part of her job? Like, they it were was, forcing it was, her? It was some sort of, like, a, a plot to catch him and okay. like, try to put an end to him being all touchy-feely. Got it. And Gopher was like, who could we do? Like, she has to get arrested. Like, exactly what you said, Shah. Like, he, he has to get arrested to be stopped. And Julie was like, the only person who could do this is my auntie. But she's all the way in, I don't know, like, Wales or England or something. Like, it's not accessible mm. and Gopher was like I could do it yeah let's, let's let's put me in a dress and a wig and I could pretend to be your auntie and then Captain's uncle realized that he just kissed a man his whole world just changed and shifted and he was like I will never do this ever again I am so oh, sorry shit. and that's his redemption yeah. oh, I kissed a man that is very, that's gay I'm not gay I don't know, like it's some, like, just some BS he hasn't been redeemed like, and if he had one or two more drinks in him he would be going for gopher's butt yeah and really. also I'd like to say that the love boat must have an amazing costume department on the boat because somehow they managed to find dresses that fit gopher wigs that fit him John <laughs> Roper found an entire outfit and his wig. I mean, all these people, they just have everything you need on the love boat. I love John Roper. He just sort of combines. Oh, sorry, John companies. Ritter. It's well, it's the way. same. It's the same thing. Everyone knew what I was talking about. We've had everyone except poor Janet. I wonder yeah. if she is. She never made the cut. She was always the, literally the third wheel. 
All right, well, that was the end of our scenes. Producer Caleb, do you recall, I know you might have cut this a little ways back, but does the uncle, does he see his ways and and apologize? Do you recall? Does he apologize to Julia or does he just say he's never going to do it again because he's so grossed out that he kissed a dude? He, both. He apologized to Julia and he's also apologizing to everyone. I don't know if Mm. the captain is ever told. Um, but like, cause like the ending scene when ever, all the stories are resolved, he's with the captain. The captain's like, "Oh yeah, my uncle, what a great cruise! Oh, hey, yeah, oh, we love, my. we love my uncle." Um, just and then oblivious to his gross uncle, asshole. Yeah, and then with the producer and writer, after that fight, they make up, and the wife is like, "Oh, you do love me, producer. Oh, mm. oh, that's amazing. Th- I, I thank you for fighting for me. Oh, I don't God. like this writer anymore. I'm back with you now." And then. The writer, I guess, finishes his book. And then the last storyline with the business deal, the woman, I'm pretty sure she actually didn't know what was going on. And then the father was like, hey, you're going to sleep with the business guy? You know, you're going to sleep with him? She's like, yeah, of course not. I I love the saxophone guy. And then it all resolves somehow. It's all very cheap love boat BS excuses, reasons. First of all, it is not attractive when I, you better be in like Mortal Kombat, zo- zombie apocalypse, or like something must literally be happening. It's not attractive to have some guy beat up another guy and like fight for you. Unless there's like literally like I'm being carried off Braveheart style by somebody after our wedding. Mm. Then you can fight. But otherwise, it's just like, what the, it's pointless. All of it unsavory. Every single plot line. Yeah. Every person in every plot line. I remember they were all playing cards and Julie walked in and was saying, hey, everyone. Begging for help. The only one that didn't participate at all, Julie, come on, was Gopher, but he was sort of guilty by association because he said nothing. And then I guess in a sense, uh, he thought about it good and hard. And then he went in to save Julie. So, I mean, if there is any redemption to be had, and there's not, at least Gopher is not as much of a scumbag as the doc, as Isaac. I don't know. I'm going to let Isaac. This is the first time I've seen Isaac be gross. So I'm going to wait. And he wasn't even that gross. Oh, was he gross before? Well, not in this way. Uh, He was an asshole. To his mom. To his mom. Right. He was an asshole to Lola Falana from a a couple of episodes ago. You're right. Okay. I'm sorry. I was. He was pretending like something's happened to Isaac where he went from sort of immature because he didn't want to see his mom date to now he's just actively a tyrant. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, Maybe throughout happens. the next seasons. We'll see what happens. Producer Caleb, what do you say? I'm excited for, for no, next week's no, episode. No, no, no. We know you're excited. You're always excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we could put this episode behind us because <laughs> it was a lot to one. But we had to split this episode into two episodes of just sure. how much content and just filth there was to discuss. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> if you did like today's episode, make sure you like, subscribe, share with a friend. And we will see you all on the cruise next week. So much awesome. more to expose. Thanks, everyone. We're sailing away, Yay. but we will be back Woo. with a new episode of yeah, Crime yeah, Cruise. Yeah, yeah. Love Boat Exposed. Make sure to subscribe. We're on all your favorite podcast platforms. And connect with us at loveboatexposed.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, but I have duties on the bridge. Good evening. Good evening.